We already built a little town, now it's time to build a little factory. What's up everybody, welcome to the life of a board gamer, my name is Daniel and today we are going to take a look at the spiritual successor to a little town called Little Factory. In this one you are building your little engine, trying to score first to 10 points and be the winner. So let's get down to the table, let me show you what you get inside this box and uh, then we'll talk some more about it. Okay, so let's check out what you get in a little factory. And since this is really small box, we're gonna do it up close. So first of all, you get a rule book, of course, and you get a solo variant in here. So the rules that explain you how to play this game solo, which we'll probably do on this channel. But the box says two to four players, but it actually goes uh, and you can play it solo because it has a solo variant. So I'm not sure why Maybe this was like last minute add-on thing, so they didn't print it on the box, but just know that you can play this solo if you want to. So first of all, you get these four cards and each player will get one of these depending when they start in the turn. If they're the first player, they will get this with a worth three coins and you will be able to purchase something that is worth three. And uh, others, of course, that are later in turn will get to spend more coins. So you get that. That's your like starting thing. You don't start with any cards or anything. You get a whole bunch of uh, victory point tokens. These are just because some buildings can provide you with victory points. Uh, they can like produce victory points. So uh, the, the basically the game plays whoever comes first to the 10 points is the winner. So the main thing about the game is these cards. So you will be building these buildings throughout the game and you will either build them by paying the cost in the material or paying the cost by the coins. And of course they produce something for you. So if you give some barrels and some wheat, you can produce two victory points. Or maybe if you just uh, give some planks, you can produce some barrels. So they work with each other sort of. And there's also buildings, uh, let me just quickly find one. Uh, well, let's say for example this one this is like almost a unique thing this gives you three points but it does nothing but it costs a lot there's also a castle that gives you five points that's basically five points to victory and you are done so like this castle for example it costs 30 gold or some of these things so and these materials that are purple they're really rare there's always one of them so it's pretty hard to build this probably you'll build them with money uh, for example, for example, this card, for example, you just need to show that you have a cow and you can produce milk. So you don't need to get rid of the card. So there's also cards like that, which are really cool, but usually you will get rid of the resources to get something else. And you will be trying to building these because they will bring you victory points, which are the main thing of how to win the game. And uh, you will be building those with three types of resources. So we have level one type of resources. They will all be available to you all the time because, I mean, if the other players didn't purchase them, of course, but uh, depending on the number of players, you will choose some of these resources and they will be on the table. And you will, these are like starting resources that you need to start with, basically. And then we have level two resources. As you can see, there's uh, a little more than level three but still there's not a lot of these and uh, they will show sporadically. So you have like five rows of cards put on the table and then some of these cards will be displayed, some of them don't. So if they are the same, they will be on each other. So there's always be five different materials displayed on the board and you will need these to purchase buildings or even to purchase these things over here, which are super rare, as I already mentioned, the purple resources are basically you have one of each so if someone takes these you have to wait for them to return it to the pools so, so you have to wait for them to spend it then you can use it because i had a building that produces uh, two victory points if you give meat and uh, one of the players took that meat and held it in his hand because it's worth eight coins you know he wanted it to buy that big castle thing so i couldn't get to it and that's there's only one and if your building can produce what's on the display, you have to have the card on the display to be able to produce it from a building, you can produce. So you need to be very smart about it. You need to be very careful to not uh, take like all the best buildings. You need to produce a little more of these low level, level two, level one resources, stuff like that. So, and yeah, that's that basically, that's everything that comes in this box, all these cards and that's that. 
Okay, so that was Little Factory and before we continue with this video, I must uh, revert your attention to these numbers over here because if you look at those numbers, a lot of you that are watching my videos are not subscribed for some reason, so do consider subscribing, it helps out a lot on this channel and uh, yeah, that is it. So Little Factory, let's talk a little bit about Little Factory, no pun intended. So. This is a spiritual successor to Little Town, but it has nothing to do with the gameplay. These are completely two different games. They play differently. They have whole kinds of different components. So uh, don't be mistaken that this is like you can play one and then another after it, like and maybe connect them somehow or something. No, these are two completely separate game by the same designer. And uh, they give you these like same feelings, but uh, they play very much differently. So Little Factory is basically a little, and still, no pun intended, little engine builder. You start with uh, some uh, amount of coins, depending which you are, what person you are in a turn, and then you will just purchase some basic or advanced resources, and uh, with those resources you will try to acquire more resources, because those re the cards can be used in all kinds of different ways. You can use them as the material to activate your buildings that you previously maybe purchased, or you can sell those cards, use them as coins to buy different other resources that you need for your buildings, or you need to buy some other stuff because all of these different stuff you can buy with either cards or coins, and you will try to manage your little engine, trying to work it the best way you can, and uh, ultimately win, scoring yourself, ten, scoring yourself 10 points. Now, what I really like about it, because the game is really tight, all the resources are displayed on a table, so and some of them are pretty rare, like those pink ones, the level 3 those resources, you only have one of each. So once every once uh, somebody takes the, uh, I don't know what, what resource do we have here, meat or the bread, it is not available until that person gets rid of it out of their hands. And they can take it from you deliberately. So this game is a little bit PvP because uh, I had this building that if I give meat, I can get two victory points and I could do that like from time to time until I, I when I spend that meat, I need to like build my engine again up working it and uh, getting that meat again, then spending it again to get two victory points. And uh, it, it's a job, you need to do stuff, you know, to get, you can't just spend it, take it, spend it, take it. You really need to work toward it to get it. But uh, when other players see what you're doing, they can kind of block you a little bit. And uh, you can always uh, go for basic resources and then just spend them in your buildings to get advanced resources. But sometimes, of course, that level two resources, the blue cards, they're not available to you. Like you have a cow, but the milk is not available. So that cow does nothing for you. It sits in your hand and does nothing. So maybe you consider trading it for coins or something like that, you know, use it to buy something else that will work for you in, in time because I know that, for example, the other player has the cow in his hand and it's my turn and I will probably purchase milk for money just to stop him from taking it for free. He just needs to show cow in his hand and take cards for free. Of course, there's a hand limit, so he can do that like forever. He still needs to spend cards, you know, return them back to the pool so everybody else can use them. But constantly looking what other players are doing is really important in this game because you need to know which resources will be available when it's your turn, stuff like that. So you need to be very, very careful how you manage your engine. Uh, some in, in one part of the game, I even managed to kind of block myself because the, the, bad, the, the least best thing that you can do is spend all cards from your, from your hands and have nothing when it's your turn because your buildings, you can activate them before, after and after playing your turn. So you need to have some cards. Of course, they can only activate once. So if they activate it before your turn, they can't activate after your turn, obviously. But still, you need to have some cards, you know, so you can activate some of your buildings. Otherwise, other, you are wasting your time otherwise. So you have to be very careful about it because uh, if you spend, if you completely dry your hand out, so to say, if you don't have any cards in your hand, you kind of get slowed down a little bit. So you need to be careful about that one. At least that's what I uh, gathered from the experience of playing it. But overall, I really like it. It's a nice little engine builder. It says it lasts 45 minutes. That's about true. 
and uh, it's nice game you just go through the motions you just play your cards trying to do different things i like engine building games in general and uh, when you start seeing that engine paying off once you get this card this card so then i can produce this and when i produce that i take it if it's of course there in the pool and i take it then th this building activates for me and then i can do this and this you know stuff like that and you get all kinds of different points and then i will buy this building which will give me two victory points it's just awesome and uh, it's small game it's a small engine builder 45 minutes usually those engine building games take about hour and a half maybe even two and a half hours you know because they you're slowly grinding and building and building your engine until it starts working creating all kinds of different points and you like have gazillion points other players has gazillion and five points more than you but in this one you just need to get to 10 points and you are done so it's a nice small fast engine building game that i absolutely adore and uh, it's a small small game it definitely stays in my collection i love it so do check it out and uh, yeah that is that thank you all for watching thank you for considering subscribing there's also a patreon so do check that out in the comments down below not in the comments in the description down below and uh, that is that thank you all for watching and uh, until next time pause it up and it is called little factory so yeah in this one you build your factory so yeah it's stupid so we build a little town it's time to build a little factory and we're gonna save that for intro before we continue with this review i must employ all of you to these numbers uh, i must employ oh my god i must employ you